Master, we have found it. The laser eye, at last. This is the end of that cursed shining force. Get rid of those men from Busto. They are of no further use to us. Alert, intruders. What? The shining force? Stop them! We must have time to remove the laser eye! And with that horrible, horrible, horrible piece of voice acting, welcome back everybody to Let's Play Shining Force. I am Bulbazak, and um, I'm trying to get back into the groove of things and get back from a long hiatus and get back in the groove of recording. And uh, Yeah, so we'll try to see if we can make uh, this a little bit more interesting. Explain bow tactics. I've shown you around the battlefield. It's actually this is an interesting battlefield because I remember from when I first played. I remembered it being a lot more, a lot tighter than it actually is. You know, I I, I normally think of this as tighter corners. You know, it, it evenly it being rather evenly spaced, and um, really that's not the case. There's a lot of open space and lulls in between battle. Uh, now, right here is uh, Balroy. Uh, you can bring... I, I only brought one flyer in. Uh, I've played it before where I could brought in both Balroy and Ammon. Uh, there are actually um, a number of ways you can do this. Uh, it's basically a bit of flying tactics. Uh, they're reasonably... They're reasonable strength right now, but weirdly enough, they're going to get weaker by like the next battle or so. Uh, it's really weird how that works out. Anyway, you could actually take the flyers down and try to take them down to hit the um, the master priest, the the priest and the uh, mage right now if you want to. Uh, there's good and there's bad points for that. Mainly the uh, the good points are that you know you might be able to get them to waste their magic. The bad points is you're probably probably going to lo lose Balboroy. Uh, it might not be as effective, effective as you want, so that's really something you need to weigh in right now, and you need to make the decision very early on. I decided to basically keep Battle Roy as, around as long as possible, and what I decided to do with the skeletons is to keep my fighters back a little bit and lure them to me, and that tends to work out pretty well. Uh, the So I kind of keep my people back, the skeletons come to me, I wipe them out. Um, so I'm I, my next note, because I of course have like a little rough outline is I'm trying to n see... I decided I'm going to, for the most part, try to keep Arthur around. Uh, mainly because you know, I want to see if I can if I can level him up. I think I talked about this before, but you know, I'm going to try to see if I can stick with Arthur for as long as I can, see if I can level him up, and try to see what a promoted Arthur looks like. Uh, it's an experiment I'm going to try running. Um, if it takes too long, then it takes too long, and we'll see. Another thing is, I was actually pretty impressed by Arthur this battle. I normally think of Arthur this point about him only being able to, like, maybe hit one damage. And he was doing pretty good. I have to admit, Arthur did terrific in this, uh, in this fight. I, mean, I was really, really impressed by him. Uh, so, I mean, it was... Here's somebody I thought was going to be a pain leveling up, and Arthur really hasn't been that bad, to be quite honest with you. I guess it's, you have to, I don't know whether it's just my faulty memory, I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, just, he ended up working out really well, and I kind of, okay, meanwhile, Balboy continues being able to not contribute whatsoever, and... I don't know. Uh, there, there are pros and there are cons. I don't know why I just checked Balbaroy's status. That was kind of stupid. There are, I guess, there are pros and there are cons to using Birdman. Like, there are pros to cons and cons to using any uh, unit. Birdman can use a wider range of weapons. They can use weapons that are normally re reserved for the heroes. Uh, and we're not going to be seeing those specialty, ty specialty type weapons until, like, the later half of the game. Poss possibly even the later the last quarter of the game. And so there's that. They can use stronger swords, better weapons. But the fact of the matter is, they don't hit as hard as I think that they really should. Um, I've never really been impressed by the Birdman class. That's just me. There are later flying classes that, in my opinion, are a lot stronger and are a lot better. And we're going to be getting them in a chapter or two. It's not going to take very long. So... 
Anyway, uh, I also wrote down here, it's one of those things that sometimes I write down things I'm not sure whether I've covered before in earlier videos, and maybe it's just a reminder for me, if it's a reminder for you, and I don't want to sound like I am boring you. But I actually wrote down a reminder on, because it's just something that occurred to me, I don't know whether I've covered it or not, is with the healing, uh, with healers, uh, there is a bit of trouble with the healing selection in the early Genesis games never goes where you want it to go. Now, if you're patient and, you know, you carefully select, that's not too bad. But a lot of times you're kind of like in a rush and you'll press buttons really fast and zoom through selections. And sometimes, you know, that's really bad. For example, when you want a magic, uh, you know, sometimes it's a drop on your part where you want to use, you know, use a mage to cast a spell and accidentally have them sit put, or stay put. But then sometimes with healers, where you think that they should be targeting the obvious target, and they target somebody else entirely, and you end up wasting a spell. And I mean, okay, that's experience, but what if you only have you only have so many healing uh, healing spells, only so many so much MP that you can use, and wasting that spell? I don't know. It just it you know you'll see enemy priests, enemy healers waste MP. They'll use higher level spells all the time. I try to conserve MP a little bit. Um, so I heal at certain levels, you know. For this game, the rule of thumb is heal, is to heal people when they're about half health. Or less. Um, later games, I kind of change that. I, it's kind of like a rule I play by ear. And wasting MP on something so frivolous as because the targeting select is not the most the most elegant. Um, I mean, that's that can be that can be frustrating. It's it's a problem that they actually solve in the Game Boy Advance re-release. Um, the tar healing selector is a little is a little smarter. Um, although the game as a whole is not as inspired. But yeah, it, it is a problem. It's something you need to keep in mind and be mindful of when you're going here. Now. Um, Right here, we have uh, some Dark Elves. Uh, you kind of want to keep your distance a little bit. They can tear you up if you're not prepared for them. So, the best thing is, for example, I'm bringing Balroy in to attack him. And you want to kind of keep close... You want to have Balroy kind of attack him, and then have your some long-range people kind of pick them off a little bit. Um, because if you're not... If you're just being stupid and you rush in, uh, they can start picking people off. So you want to be careful as you're going through here. It's probably... It is probably going to slow you down, but I do recommend caution uh, with the Dark Elves and as you're going in to deal with the Dark Mages here. So, like I said, there's you have this little bottleneck. It's a two it's a two path wide bottleneck area, and it's more like a one path wide because if you just rush everybody into the two path wide, you're going to be sitting ducks. For the Dark Elves. So like I said, here is I'm bringing Balboroy in. I am pretty much bringing him close range to the Elves uh, so that they can't really counterattack. And then I'm trying to get my long range people up in range of the Elves so I can kind of pick them off before they're really a problem at all. Um, that really didn't work out for me, and essentially it will slow you down. Uh, the main reason this battle is so long is... There are a few bottleneck areas, and then there are wide gaps. So you'll have wide gaps of kind of where you have to space yourself out and, and before you can get to the next section. So there are like two or three sections where it's like, okay, I beat this group of enemies. Oh, now I have to travel for several turns before I can get to the next one. It's it's not as tight as you want. Uh, so it takes a little while. It takes a little while. But, um, and it's um. It's an interesting battle. I mean, you have these tight, tight spaces, and then you have these wide open spaces, and not enough enemies. You kind of have like little groups of enemies. You're like, okay, I fight this enemy here, this enemy here, this enemy here, this enemy right here. There's like four clusters of enemies. You take and you just take care of them separately. They don't try to. They just kind of stay in their own separate little areas. Um, I guess that's great, but it can be a tad boring. So anyway, we're getting here to like the end of the ball neck, and again, we kind of have to space things out and be careful, because we have a mage, and that means 
Blaze Level 2 or Freeze Level... Whatever they have. I forget what they have. It's been a while since I've played this. But it, it's a mar- multi-targeting spell. So, I'm, of course, I'm not really grouping people together. And I have to also be careful of that Dark Elf. So, I'm trying to do the best I can. So, I'm kind of getting people together. Kind of keeping them a little separate. I'm not sure what the mage is going to do. And I bring it up, bring them up to take out the Dark Mage first. Now, also below the Dark Mage is a new enemy type. Uh, I don't type for that we see this battle, and that is the I think it's the Dark Priest. Uh, they are the this is the, this is the first chance we've had healing uh, units for a while. These are the first we see of enemy healing units, and as I said before, uh, they're kind of stu- I don't know whether they're smart or whether they're stupid. Um, I didn't say stupid. Because uh, they're not very conservative with their healing ability, and maybe that's a good thing. But there'll be very little damage damage done to an enemy to a uh, enemy, and they'll heal it. And they won't use like a level one healing spell, you know, like oh, you've just got a little neck. I'll use a level one healing spell. No, they'll use a level two healing spell. They'll use the, they'll, they'll they'll max out the level just because they can for kicks and giggles. So it's kind of weird. Um, where do they fall on, as far as where they fall on, uh, priority list? Um, they're really close to Dark Mages. Uh, right now, the Dark Mage really takes priority because he can do more damage. But it's essentially Dark Mage, Dark Priest, and then Long Range. Uh, Dark Priests tend to be priority, so if you can, take them out. See, I moved my guy down to work on the Dark Priest, and I'm going to be take, uh, swapping low out, uh, no, not low, Luke out, um, with somebody who can actually do a bit of, uh, to somebody who can actually kill the Dark Mage. But the problem is, of course, we're in the Spalneck area, so this is going to be kind of a nightmare trying to get Luke out of the way. And they kind of arrange themselves, uh, arrange themselves a bit in such a way that it's going to be a nightmare trying to get them past. So, I made a mistake, because I'm thinking that uh, the space right across from the Dark Elf is act- was actually adjacent to where Luke was, and that's why I didn't move Henry there. Um, in reality, it's actually not adjacent at all, and Henri could have um, actually gone right there, and I don't know how much health the Dark Elf has, um, but possibly take care of him. Anyway... The point of the matter is that, you know, I could have moved a, a long-range fighter in range, and I just didn't. So, there you go. Now, again, Arthur becomes very useful here. I, I, I consider having Arthur take care of the Dark Elf, but I kind of want to continue leveling Arthur up as much as I can, and that means uh, using him to attack the Dark Priest. So, using him, the Dark Priest kind of has more of priority. Um, and now I can try to, we can try to get through this little bottleneck area and, uh, arrange our people in the best, the best way possible so as to push through and, um, continue on. First things first, gotta get rid of this Dark Elf. And, yeah, like I said, I could have had Henri take him out, but I was thinking. Or I actually thought that, again, that space was adjacent to, um, Luke, but it really wasn't. So now Balboy is freed up, and um, I'm just going to have him. Like I said, it's now claim time. We have a bunch of Dark Priests just clustered around here for some reason. Uh, dark Priests, some skeletons, and that's about it. It's really nothing much. It's I don't know why they need, needed that many Priests right there. Maybe to get used to the idea, but it's essentially useless. But, so whatever. You just kind of go and you, cl- you clean up a house. Not that bad. Funny thing is, like I said, they always tend to, in my mind, enemies will waste their magic when they have it. And um, it's a great way you can, if you're clever, you can probably get them to waste to waste their MP and then come on in. But that's uh, that's not the best strategy. Um, now another thing is, I'm also trying to keep Arthur safe. I don't think this is. Um, and the reason I'm trying to keep Arthur safe is, again, I'm trying to level him up. Um, he's not... He's not expendable. He kind of is expendable, but... 
I kind of realized, you know, he's actually not as bad. He has less HP than I want. Um, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, he, supposedly he is very good once leveled up. And we're going to be leveling up. We're going to start actually promoting people soon. Um, if not in this chapter, we're going to be promoting people in the next chapter. So, now we just kind of range people. We're kind of actually now able to kind of get into this. And this is probably... This is not the most intense battle section, but this is probably the second most intense battle. This is the this is about as intense right here as it's going to get in this battle, except for the very end. Uh, so... This is where you're going to be spending... A, kind of using the be the most of your tactics, you could say. So I'm... I'd say the priority here is you have two priests and you have a skeleton. And I'd say your priority is you get rid of the priests. Plain and simple, you know, and then take care of the skeleton. Um, so shoot it, kill the priest if you can. Uh, if not, you know, there's a good skeleton there. And you kind of just make your way down the stairs. Uh, the enemies aren't as aggressive or gung-ho or whatever you want to say as you think they are. They're, they're going to get... It's going to get... Um, it's going to be different later on. Uh, we're we're, we're going to talk about that when we get into later, later stages of the game, because they're, they're going to like to start going after either your main character or your healers. It just depends. Sometimes each game is different. I've, I've noticed that. Sometimes the enemy AI will act differently from one game to the next, and I don't know why. It's, it's very strange. I don't know whether it's... Uh, I don't know what to do this. But um, it's something interesting, and this game just continues to stay fresh for me. Which is part of the reason why I like it. I can play this game over and over and over again, and uh, still enjoy myself. So, now it's just a matter of cleaning up here, so... We're just going to do that, then we're going to move on, and... Uh, then we actually have some very special things that we're going to get, but that's going to be at the very beginning of the next episode. Uh... See, right here, I think this is where I was kind of concerned, because he walked right by where Arthur was, and I think he can... He might be able to one-shot Arthur. I'm not sure whether he can or not. Um, see, there was a wacky healing selection again. And I think this is what, what I meant when I said keeping Arthur safe. Because I think I'm going to, like, move Arthur back or something. But, um... Arthur's essentially a long-range fire at this point. I'm probably going to be making him a close-range fighter soonish. But, um, kind of boxing in the skeleton here. So, we kind of do that. And who do we have next? We have Gong, which is... who's useless now because he ran out of magic. I'm trying to... I think I put him off to the side over there. Kind of, you know, I'm going to deal with you later. And, uh, let's see. I'm getting moving Chris down, because then Chris can just sit there and easily heal Hans, and then I can just aim from there. But now, uh, well, now he's dead. I thought now, you know, he'd be somebody alive, whatever. I kind of, I don't know, when did I record this? I probably recorded this about a month ago. I just put off doing this video, but I'm actually going to be doing, um, might as well just talk about the state of things. It's, it's one of those things that um, I had a series of events that, you know, I had, had about a month or so where I didn't have computer access. And then when I came back, I just never got back into that kind of thought process of recording and doing videos like I used to. Try as I might, it just, it just didn't work out, it seemed. And, and then again, I had where my desktop just, it bro my computer broke for a while. And so that made it even harder. And so I've been trying to get back into the groove of essentially daily videos, basically back to my weekly schedule. And it's just been harder and harder. Um, just the stuff I used to do, you know, getting back on that schedule. It's it's like once you get in the mindset that it doesn't happen, it just it's hard to get back into that. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit down. We're going we're going to try to do this because. You know, I'd like to move on to some bigger and better things, and I have some bigger projects, and I just just need to have a little bit of stability, and 
schedule and all that stuff in my life. And, it's, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Anyway, like I said, this section is kind of strange. You only have two enemies over there at, at the stairs. And they don't come after you. They don't do nothing. You have essentially this wide open space. You could have had this really cool battle. But instead you get restricted to that bottle, bottleneck. And this huge space is essentially wasted. It's kind of strange. So anyway, you're just kind of lining up. I'm being cautious because of the Dark Mage. But really, that really doesn't matter because they're not going to move whatsoever for some strange reason. So I have all the time in the world to kind of just line my characters up however I want. However I want. So you know, if they will allow me to line my party up and get ready to attack them, then more power. I, I don't know. More power to me to them. But it's all good with me. So, I'm going to essentially kind of line them up in this kind of diagonal where I kind of keep this, the, gen, the same general idea of my uh, formation, but make it ex exceedingly harder for the Dark Mage to, to, to target me. And I, of course, I swoop in with Balboy because I think if you have a flying character, if you can, you should attack from a unique place that only a flying character can attack from. So, cliff faces, trees, all that stuff. Are the best, and you know I'm, now I'm coming in and you know swooping in for essentially the kill. And it's laughably easy. I mean, it's almost embarrassingly so. I can't. I mean, I can't believe it at points. So, still trying to get. I don't think have I used any of these magic users at all. I don't really think I have. It's kind of sad. So, one thing I'm considering with Gort, with Gort was. I kind of have to move in order to finish off the skeleton. I have to double up on somebody and put them in the, in the range for the Dark Mage. So I've tried to figure out who I want to do that with. And I finally decided you know, I'd do it with Kim instead of Balbury. And um, of course, it really doesn't matter because Luke's just going to kill the Dark Mage like that. that. Like I said, that was pathetically easy. They kind of just stood there and allowed their deaths, deaths to come, you know. I kind of just swooped in, and they never had a chance to counterattack. Counter it's, like I said, you have this wide open space, and it's completely wasted. It's, it's kind of sad. Now, this is actually probably the most difficult part of the battle, because you have that, the, the way they're lined up the elf, or elf formation, you have the skeleton, you have uh, the dark priest, which is your healer, and you have a master mage, which is a much, much stronger mage. I think he has, he's freeze, I think it's level 2 or level 3. It's a much more advanced spell. Now, they also introduced a new enemy uh, called the Lizard Man. Uh, Lizard Man is a, a close-range enemy. He attacks with an axe. He's probably the strongest you're going to face at the moment. And he can do some serious damage, especially since the mage is kind of in that corner where it's really difficult to hit him. So, of course, I'm swooping in with Balboy to try to do some damage to the mage, to try to cut my way through. Um, knowing that's going to make it exceedingly harder, and seeing if I can kind of, you know, do some attacks, you know, try to cut in through the um, skeleton, uh, uh, kill the Lizard Man, maybe so I can get to the mage, because um, that's the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I kind of move it, some char uh, some characters uh, and some some units actually down to the bottom of the stairs. So what I really want to do is I want to get a magic user down, so I can use um, a multi-hit magic spell, whether it's freeze or blaze. See, there we go. I think it's free that was freeze level 2. One hit kill. So that's that's the danger, because if you're, if you're not careful here, um, the master mage can wipe your units out, so you have to be very careful on, who you, on how, you, how you go about this. And it's kind of almost impossible to lure them. They kind of refuse to be lured at all. And so you kind of have to be pretty careful as, as, as to how you do this. Uh, so I kind of like, I'm careful as, who I'm, as to how, who I'm moving down. I'm trying to get my magic users down, but of course, the stairs kind of that creates this natural bottleneck where it's almost impossible. So you have to try to figure out. And I decided to go against the lizard man, go against the lizard man, that way I can try to gain access, get access to uh, the Master Mage. And then I'm going to send somebody... 
I decided the best thing to do is to put Arth is to put a long range person right there to basically attack the skeleton. It's going to be a little bit harder because then I can put a close range person in there as well and cut through the skeleton and go around and flank. But man, flanking is incredibly hard. And I'm leaving the healers up there because then I can just have you know the weak people who are hurt kind of move their way up. And it's kind of annoying, like I said, it's hard to get a magic user down there. And I'm just leaving Gong there, because Gong's essentially useless. Now, essentially, the Master Mage is going to hurt, hurt Gord. Um, and the problem thing is, after Gord gets hurt, you want to retrieve him as soon as possible, because if not, the Lizard Man's essentially going to decimate him. But essentially what you do, kind of do is you kind of continue pinging the Lizard Man, and continue attacking the skeleton until you can get direct access. And at this point is I can't get anybody else really close, so you kind of have to switch switch units out. And it's too late for Gord because the Lizard Man's going to essentially finish him off. Kind of The Master Mage sets him, sets him up, the Lizard Man knocks him down. So then I decide to put my main character in the way, and I'm taking an awful big chance and hoping I can take care of the Lizard Man, which I didn't. So I'm taking an awful big chance here, and if I'm wrong, I'd have to restart. So I'm moving Teo down, because that way I can use her, hopefully, um, sooner rather than later, when I need to repeat, uh, pull somebody out. And same thing with Henri. Keep the healers up there. And... Um, Good thing is now I have opened the way with the skeleton, so now I can actually start flanking around. And the first thing you want to do is you want to defeat the master mage. I think defeating the master mage actually ends the battle. Uh, I'm not completely sure, but I think that's the case. So you can kind of try to kill everybody, or kill the master mage for you know essentially a game, essentially game here. And of course that's the route I'm going because the master mage can essentially tear you up. Um, so, yeah, this is a, it's very dangerous here because, again, Master Mage can set you up for a very big beating uh, for the Lizard Man if you're not careful. And I, I considered retreating Hans, but I figured Hans needs to take care of the Lizard Man. Uh, that way, my main character is not under an immediate danger. And uh, that was the best move. Um, and then I could just. Uh, kind of retreat him and allow the healers to get to him, and then kind of just continue cleaning up, starting with the Dark Priest, going down to the Master Mage, and we essentially have this battle beaten. It's essentially over. So who who gets the fin Teo gets the finishing blow with Blaze Level 2, and that's essentially it. That's the battle. Um, I mean, that's it for the Dark Priest. Who's, uh, who's going to get the final battle? The other one. Let's see, there's, um, you know, Arthur. Actually, you know what? With all I've been saying, that's actually kind of fitting. Arthur gets that final, that final hit in. So, uh, anyway, next time we will continue, uh, continue with the story and actually move on. So, until then, next time, I am Balzac, signing out. See you guys then.